when I read it, you don't ever complain to God. You think God is going to listen to whiners? No. He didn't listen. If he if he won't listen to his own nation of Israel, do you think he's going to listen to kids? Let me ask you, parents. When when your kids complain and whine and bellying to you, does that wear on you? Be honest. You're in church. Of course. Because, how do you think God is? God is this way. God loves us. And God will make us better people. But we have to fall in love with Him. Look what it says here in verse 12. Moses said in verse 11, All these burden of the people, these people are getting my nerves. They become a burden to me. Have I conceived all these people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom? You know what Moses was saying? Listen to this. As a nursing father beareth with the sucking father, beareth the sucking child into the land which thou swearest their fathers. Whence should I have flesh to give all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give me us flesh to weep. You know what Moses is saying? Moses is saying, They become a burden to me. And they hurt me. It's like I have to carry them everywhere. I have to hold their hands. I have to reassure them every second. Every... Do you know people like that? Oh, yeah. And it's like every second they, they, they cling to you for their existence. They, they cling to you for their positive self-image. They cling to you for validation. They cling for you for happiness. They cling for you for strength. And I don't know about you, but that wears a person down quicker than anything. And Moses became that person. The nation of Israel zapped Moses' strength until he had nothing to give. The nation of Israel zapped his, his mental strength, his physical strength, his emotional strength, his spiritual strength till he had nothing. Moses carried the burden for two and a half million people to God every day. He did not have a day off. He did not have a vacation. He did not go to Tahiti and, and sip some iced tea. And, ah, get away from it. He was there every day. And he did not get a break. You think his boss gave him a break? <laughs> his boss said, son, these are your people. And these people are with you wherever you go. You have no peace. Imagine going to the bathroom and people follow you in the bathroom. Yeah, that, that, that's a little overdone. Really? For the nation of Israel, that's exactly pro quo. And see, Moses was a human being. A human being. Flesh and blood. He, he needed eight hours of sleep. He probably needed man's at this time. He went to God and says, Lord, you promised these people the promised land. You promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. You promised them peace. You promised them health. You promised them blessings. Where is it? There are times in a Christian's walk when you think you have no blessing in your life and all you have is heartache and burdens and problems all the time. But know this. God knows those problems and burdens and He will solve them. There, there are times in your life when you want to quit. God did not raise a family of quitters. God's people are not quitters. God's children are not quitters. God, God's nation are not quitters. Quitters will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Quitters will not be in the presence of Jesus Christ. Quitters are sissies. Quitters are losers. Quitters are people that don't care to try. P quitters are people that will not go forward. You think the United States of America was defended by quitters? No. They were defended by men and women that gave their lives for the betterment of this nation and they sacrificed their life. They were not quitters. Quitters is something that is not in God's language. Quitters is something that Jesus cannot and cannot and just despise. He hates quitters. Jesus is not a quitter. God is not a quitter. Moses was not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. If you are a child of God this evening, you are not a quitter. You will go forward. You will get through this. You will be victorious in Jesus' name. You will conquer the highest mountains in your life. You will conquer any disease that comes your way. You will conquer any relationship problems that come in your midst. You will conquer it because you're not a quitter. And the reason you're not a quitter because he's not a quitter. Well, enough of the robber I'll talk, but here, here's, the, here's something here. <laughs> he says here in verse 14, I am not able to bear all these people alone because it is too heavy for me. Look at verse 14. I am not able to bear all these people's burdens and problems and nagging and complainings because it's too heavy for me. I'm tired. Lord, I can't do this anymore. And if thou deal with me, look what he says in verse 15. Kill me? 
Have you ever prayed that before? Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm done. You know what? Just take it. Kill me. I'm tired of this asthma. I can't breathe like a normal freaking human being. Just take me. I can't eat my donuts anymore. <gasps> That's enough. <gasps> take me. People quit for the stupidest reasons. But look at verse 15. Moses was so tired, he actually told God to kill him. Remember Elijah? He prayed the same prayer. Lord, take my life. I'm not ready for this. Queen Jezebel is after me, and I'm scared of that woman. Oh my God. Talk about sissy. See, I'm scared of that woman. Take me home. Country road. God says, no. I'm not going to give you an easy way out. You're going to be better, stronger, faster, more mature. You are going to be a better Christian. You're going to be a better leader, Moses. I'm not taking you home, and I'm not going to kill you. I pray thee out of thy hand, if I find favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And the Lord God said unto them, Gather me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with me. And I will come down and talk with thee there. Now listen to God. He actually said, Okay, hold on, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to meet you down here. I'm going to have a, a, a meeting with you. We're going to have a business meeting of the church. And I'm going to officiate this meeting. These 70 people, I'm going to ordain them to help you. And I'm going to embolge you. I'm going to give you a pep talk. And you're going to go out and finish the job that you were supposed to do. And I will take the spirit which is upon you, Moses, and I'm going to give it to these people. You talk about the spirit of God on these 70 men on fire to go out and do God's work. That is powerful. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that you will not bear it alone. Okay, I'm going to answer your call, Moses. I will send you help. 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 You are not alone. The Calvary is coming. I will, you will not no longer feel like you're the only one out there. You're not alone. Help is on the way. The nation of Israel is going to be supplied again. And you will have people to work with that will work with you. It's not enough to have people with you. They have to work with you. You can have people with you, but if they don't work with you, they are useless. I always tell people, work with me. Don't work against me. I don't need the stress. If you want to get from A to B, you're going to have to go. You know what people want to go to A? You know how they do the alphabet in A to Z if they're lazy? Here's how they say the alphabet, A to Z. Count to ten. Ten. What about the other uh, 24 letters of the alphabet? I tried that one time with the teacher. The teacher thought I was stupid. Pete, say A to Z. Go from A to Z. A to Z. You try that with God and see what you get. See if God will laugh at you. See if God, God may take away your tongue. Amen? Amen. Remember John's, uh, John's uh, father? He couldn't believe what was happening, so God made he, he God took away his tongue. He didn't speak. Whew. Yeah, God can do a lot of things, people, and we have to be ready for that. Kill me, and the Lord said. And, and after this, now look what it says here, verse eighteen. And thou, the people, sanctify yourselves, separate yourselves against tomorrow, and you shall eat flesh. God's going to say this, okay? You know what? You're going to get your you're going to get what you want. God is saying, you're going to get what you want. You want, you want meat? You're going to get me. You're going to get it. You want meat? Sanctify yourself. Separate yourselves tomorrow. For you have wept in the ears of the, Lord, of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us meat to eat? For it is well with us in Egypt. Oh, boy, when you tell God that it was better in Egypt than when God gives you, that's just a slap in the face of God, is it? That's just putting God down. That is disrespecting God. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and you're going to eat it. You want, hey, you want meat? God's going to give you meat, but there's a catch to it. Verse 19, and you should not eat it one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten or twenty days. You're going to have it for a whole month. Now look at verse 20. Why don't you look at verse 20? This is funny. <laughs> you ready for this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold my laughter in. Look at verse 20. You're going to have so much meat for a whole month, it's going to come out of your nostrils. 
in any other open orifice you have. Do you think something? I, I, do you see something coming? I do. The devil gives you what you want. I've said this all this time. When we stop saying it, when people actually listen, the devil gives you what you want. God gives you what you need. God says, I'm going to give you what you want. Let's look at the sins here. Look at the, let's look at the sins in your notes. The sins, the sin was this, is that they complained to God instead of praying to God about them. If we get on our hands and knees or wherever we are, we will put our hands to God and pray to God about what is bothering us. God will bless us. Look at Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Philippians 4, 4 through 7 in the New Testament. Acts uh, Romans Acts, Romans 1st, 2nd Corinthians Galatians, Ephesians, and Philippians Look at Philippians 4, 7 In Philippians chapter 4 starting in verse 4 I want you to listen to this because a lot of people cannot grasp this concept Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice Always. You know what that means? That means all the time. Every day, every second, every hour. Rejoice. But, nope. Rejoice. But, nope. Rejoice. But I have, nope. I'm going, nope. But, nope. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. All those people out there that are watching, rejoice in the Lord. You lost your home, rejoice. God will give you another home. You lost your job, rejoice. God will give you another job. You have cancer, we have a gentleman that knows about that. He's battled it firsthand. You will get over that cancer. Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. The word moderation means gentleness. Moderation, I don't know if you have it in the... means gentleness. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, now look at verse 6, every single thing, minor thing, major thing, small thing, big thing, anything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Supplication means appeal, a plea, a last ditch effort. Lord, I'm at my wit's end. Remember Moses? I am at my wit's end, Lord. Please forgive me. Supplication means appeal. It means uh, practically begging. It's, it, that's what it means. It means a, a, a very intense appeal. Lord, for, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. If you don't come in right now, I am going to kill myself. If you don't come in right now, I'm going to do something stupid. If I don't come, if you don't, God will do it. He will intercede. Let your request be made known unto God. You have to ask to receive. You have to knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You have to seek, and you will find it. What does that mean? We have to put a little effort into this. We're going to have to meet God halfway. There's no finding unless you seek it. There's no opening unless you knock. There's no giving unless you ask for it. Well, God can read my mind. That's not the point. He can read your mind, yes. But the point is obeying His command. The point is showing Him respect. The point is communicating and having a relationship with Him. Talk to Him. Ask of Him. Plead of Him. Be bare and open to Him. That's what He wants from us. He doesn't want a group of people that... is that? Or this. I'm not going to ask God. He, he sees my problems. I'm not going to ask him. Thank you, Pastor. But you know what? He already knows my problems. I'm not going to ask him. You know what I tell that person? Then you're not going to get it. What, what are you saying? I've had, I, had a, I had a man, a, a man that thought he knew everything. He knew squat. But he thought he knew everything because he was a professor. He came to me and he says, uh, your God, if he's all-knowing, he should know what I'm going through. 
If he's if he's omnipresent, then he knows where I've been. If he's omnipotent, then he has the strength to carry through. So I'm not going to ask God of anything. Your God is God, then he knows me. If your God is God, he will bless me without me even asking. If your God is God, then I don't have to talk to him. I said, sir, God is almighty, omnipotent, omniscient. But if you don't ask, you won't get it. If you don't seek, you if you won't find it. If you don't knock, he's not gonna open it to you. I don't care how smart you are, you're showing your rear to me right now. The tag the, the tell is controlling the head. You're going by what you think. Do you, do you do that to your wife? You know what he said? Yes! You mean you don't talk to your wife? No! She knows me. We've been married 25 years. She knows me. Do you talk to her and say hello at least? Nah, she knows. <laughs> oh, guess when do you talk to her? Oh, when you want a cup of coffee or something? God is not that way, folks. We do not treat God as a last resort. We don't say God after every, after. We don't we don't talk to God after we are bored and we have no one else to talk to. We don't talk to God unless uh, oh Lord, I really need this from you. You have a minute. We talk to God constantly, all the time. We talk to God. We pray to Him. We ask Him. We plead to Him. We cry to Him. We have a relationship with God. Moses had that relationship with God. He got on his hands and he says, Lord, forgive me, but I'm tired. I'm frustrated. And I've said that many times too. Lord, I'm tired. I'm frustrated. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to continue or do you want me to stop? That's a stupid question. God says, you know the answer. Go forward. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't turn around. Go forward. I'm with you. I have no peace in my life. You know why you have no peace in your life? Because you do not have a relationship with God. Look what it says in verse 7. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Notice here. Heart. Mind. The heart will deceive you. The mind believes you. Jesus Christ should be number one in your mind. Number one in your heart. Then you will have peace. No God, no peace. Know Him, have peace. Okay. Now, let's look here in uh, in your notes here. The sins they complain to God instead of praying to God about them. We saw that. They also lusted after the things they did not have. God didn't give them meat, and that's what they wanted. Have you ever have you ever noticed, kids? If you give someone something different than the other, they want the same thing as the other? Mm -hmm. It's called lust. And that's a sin. What? It's a sin. They lusted after the things of each other. They wanted the fish, garlic, cucumbers, melons, onions. They wanted that back. But they forgot of the pain and misery they were under. Folks, sometimes we are so fixated on the wrong things we are willing to accept everything else with it just to get what we want. Does that make sense to you? I can't let I can't let him or her. I don't care if they beat the hell out of me or I don't care if they cheat on me, but I can't let them go. You know what the other person does? I got made. I got a marijuana. I get it home in the way. I got it made. She'll never leave me. I cheat on her all the time. Who's the stupid one? Him or her? No. You cheat on God. Who do you think is going to be the stupid one? You. You tell God I don't need you. Who do you think is going to fall? You tell God to screw it. Who's going to be? Who's the one that's going to get it? Folks, we cannot treat God like we treat our parents. We cannot treat God like we treat other people with disrespect and dishonor. We cannot treat God, God casually like we treat others. We treat God with respect and honor. 
we treat God like He is, the creator of the heavens and the earth. We treat God as our Father which art in heaven. We treat Him with the utmost respect and honor. We treat Him like He is our life. And the nation of Israel actually had the gall to back talk God, complain to God, actually wanting to go back to Egypt, get enslaved again in sin, get enslaved in idolatry just so they could eat what they want. They wanted to they kill Moses, they wanted to do away with Moses, they wanted to have a, a mutiny right then and there over Moses because they did not like Moses anymore. I got news for you, people. It's a great leader is not always liked. A great leader is respected. A great leader is not always loved, but a great leader is admired. A great leader is not always your BFF, but he is the friend that you have in need when the time comes. And that's what Moses was. You think anyone asking for a cup of coffee? Hey Moses, let's go talk. You know what that turns into? After you get the cup of coffee and you sit down with Moses? Moses, I have so many problems. Let me talk to you. Moses was like, oh, I thought we were going to have a friendly conversation. Oh, you're complaining. Go back here. They wanted, look at look what it says here in verse 20. That the whole month coming out of your nostrils and to be loathsome unto you, but that you have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him. What come forth out of Egypt? The people of the nation of Israel are saying, if, we're gonna, if we knew it was going to be like this, we would have stayed where we were. You know how blasphemous that is? I know Christians. You ready for this? And those that are watching out there? I've heard this. No lie. I've heard Christians say they want to go back to the way they were before they became a Christian. Do you want to go back to the drugs, the party, the lifestyle, living and doing what they want? Before they became Christian, they miss those days. They miss the concerts. They miss the parties. They miss uh, doing what they want, what they want. They miss the laziness, the arrogance. They miss all that. They don't want to. They don't want to follow God. They got tired of going to church. They got tired of praying. They got tired of witnessing. They got tired of reading the Bible because it became boring and not exciting. They got tired of hanging around God's people because they're too boring. All they talk about is God all the time. All they talk about is praise and glory. You know, I want to talk about other stuff. You know, there's more to life than just God. There's more to life than just singing hymns. There's more to life than just the Bible. I want to talk about what's happening in Hollywood. I want to talk about what's happening on TNT. I want to talk about what's happening in the music world. I want to talk about those fun things. You know, I miss that. I miss going out and having a drink and getting drunk and doing something stupid and then laugh about it the next morning. I miss those days, Pastor. Then I tell him, you know what? You're not a Christian. If you miss that more than God's life, leave. Get out. Go. A pastor shouldn't say that. An honest one would. If you want that life so bad, son, go. God's not going to stop you. Remember the prodigal son? What did he do? He got all the inheritance from his father. Where did he go? He went to a far, far away place to waste his money on what? On whores and life. Why did he go such a faraway place? People think that if you go to a faraway place, God won't see you. <laughs> if you go to a faraway place, your family, your relatives, and friends don't know what you're doing. I got news for you. That does not happen. They will know. And God will see. Sometimes, well, this is what the father of the prodigal son realized. Sometimes, you have to let them hit rock bottom. Sometimes they have to starve. Sometimes they have to be homeless. Sometimes they have to learn a lesson so harsh that it finally clicks in their mind and goes, Oh, my way sucks. And then they crawl to God and says, Lord, have mercy on me. And God reaches down and picks them up and says, listen to what he says, 
today is the first day of the first year. The nation of Israel, listen to this. This business meeting that was going to happen, Moses went out in verse 24 and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered the 70 men to the elders of the people and set them around the tabernacle. Look at verse 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke unto them and took the spirit that was upon Moses and gave it to the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Amen. Praise God. They were on fire. There remained two of the men in the camp. The name was Eldad and the other was Medad. And the spirit rested on them and they were of them. They were written, but they went back into the tabernacle and they prophesied in the camp. Joshua, verse 28, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for thy sake, would God have all the people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Moses, saying, Moses was saying, If all these people were just prophets, we would have it. Made. Verse 30, Moses got all the camp and the elders within the camp. Moses says to the people of Israel, Lord, feed them. And there was a strong wind from the Lord, and they brought quail from the sea. And they let them fall into the camp as they were a day's journey. As they were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, two cubits high upon the face of the earth. You know how, how much two cubits is? Right here. Quail from feet to hip. Quail. Meat. God says, you want meat? You've got meat. Everywhere you looked, quail. Everywhere you looked, meat. The people stood up all the day and all night. All day and all night into the next day. And they gathered the quail. They put it in baskets. Put it in whatever they had. They gathered ten homers of that. You know how much one homer is? You want to know how much one homer is? Get ready for this. 86 gallons. They gathered 10 of those of those uh, homers, which means 86 times 10, you do the you do the math. And they spread upon them all themselves around the camp. Before we read the next verse, I'm gonna have a talk. I'm gonna show you the ease. What are those ease pair for? First E stands for excuses. On our journey with God, when we fall, fail, slow down, want to take a detour, when we get tired and frustrated of following God, we start making excuses. The nation of Israel got out of Egypt. Another E. Here we go. Is another letter of the day. E. They left Egypt. They started making excuses. Did God really have this in mind? Remember Eve and Adam? What caused it? The serpent said, did God really say that? Did he mean that? Did you misunderstood him? Did he speak the right language? We start making excuses. Then when we start making excuses, we want to be enabled. You know what enable means? Do something for someone else. Carry the load for them. Do for them what they could do for themselves. Enabled. The nation of Israel was enabled by Moses to an extent because Moses should have been a leader and said, quit your complaining, quit your whining. God will bless you, God will protect you. Where's your faith? But no, what did Moses do? He enabled them by saying, I feel your pain. Bill Clinton now, I feel your pain. I, I understand what you're going through. You know, my heart goes out to you. Joel, we'll see now time. My, I tell you what, I wish I was in your shoes. I wish I could trade places for you to make you, I mean, Crap! He enabled it. 
We live in a nation where people make excuses, amen? We live in a nation where we enable people to live in their sin and to continue sinning instead of saying stop sinning, amen? We enable people to do stupid things and call it cute or call it nice or call it unique. We enable people by doing for them what they could do for themselves. We enable them. Well, that's no big deal. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. You think God says that to you? No. You think God ever told you, son, daughter, it doesn't matter. You'll get over it. Live on. You think God says that to you? You'll live. No. God does this to you. God empowers you. God says, I have given you this talent and gift. Use it. I have given you the strength. Use it. I have given you the time. Use it. I have given you the ability. Use it. I have given you leadership. Follow it. I have given you talents. Go and make the world a better place for yourself and the world. Use it. Empower. You can do it. You can do it. Rah, rah. You can do it. I'm tired. You can do it. You're not going to die. Well, I'm frustrated. Life is frustrating. Tomorrow's a new day. Pray to God. Leave it in His hands and see what happens tomorrow. Empower. God empowered the nation of Israel. He empowered Moses. He empowered these 70 men. God empowers you today. I can't do it. Stop saying can't. That's the devil's language. The devil does not want you to do it. The devil does not want you to be empowered. The devil wants you to make excuses and he wants you to be enabled. The devil wants you to be lazy. The devil wants you to be apathetic. The devil does not want you to care. The devil wants you to suck. Don't say that to them. All she thinks is negative or he thinks is negative all the time. You know what? It's time to grow up. It's time to do it. Because our God is not a quitter. Our God is able, and our God is one. To the final E. Expectations. I want to ask you a question right now. This is a test for Crosswell Community Church. What are your expectations of your life? And don't say, I don't know. I don't know. Not an answer. Uh, can I get back on dad tomorrow? Not an answer. Right now, the second, what is your expectations of this life that you have? What is your plan for life? I don't know. No, don't say I don't know. I, I, nope. Do you have a concrete plan for life? Mm -hmm. What is your plan for life? What are your stages of life? You got to start here to get here. How are you going to get there? Are you going to make excuses? Are you going to be enabled to wait for someone or something to help you? Or are you going to empower yourself and say, you know what? Forget this. God is on my side. God, if, I want to do this. You know what? You're not going to do it if God doesn't want you to do it. Let's get that straight right now. If God does not want you to do it, you're not going to do it. What? Remember, you're His child. The child does not tell the Father what to do. You can ask, but He might put you in a different path. God may put you in a different level. But you're going to do what God wants you to do. Not what you want to do. See, that's the thing about being a Christian that a lot of people don't like. You mean I have to submit to God? Yeah, you have to submit to God. You mean I have to do what He says? Yeah, you have to do what He says. You mean I have to take whatever He gives me? Yes, you have to take whatever He gives you. If He gives you a jalopy, you better treat that jalopy like gold, Bubba, because that's right from God. Amen. If you got an ugly, ugly person, and that's you to the problem, and, and, and you know that's a good person on the inside, you better take that person out to the problem. It's not on the outside. Inside. It's not on the outside. Inside. Okay.
beauties of the painting. The devil's